Hey guys, it's Jamie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have an embroidery video for you. I'm going to show you my process of coming up with a design, putting that onto paper, and then eventually putting it onto fabric. I hope this video helps some of you guys find inspiration. Enjoy! Alright, so the first thing that I do is just go onto Pinterest and type in what I'm looking for. And right off the bat, you'll see that they've got a lot of inspiration and fan art, things like that. But what I'm going to focus on is this top bar, and I'm going to go to Gigi because that's what I want to make an embroidery of. So basically what we're looking for right now is a reference photo of Gigi, something that you can either look at and draw, or if you want to take a screen cap from the movie, you can actually trace directly over it on your computer screen if you need to. So they've got a lot of options, as you can see. I want one that's just straight on, so I found this image here. And you can save that to your computer, and like I said, use it as a reference or trace over it if you need to. And then we're gonna look for more inspiration. So back to this top bar, I'm gonna find where it says screen cap because that's what I use for most of my flower inspiration. Clicking on that, you'll see you get a general aesthetic of the movie. It's a lot of light colors, so I'm probably going to do some pastel type flowers. And looking at screen caps is honestly where I get most of my inspiration, just because you don't run the risk of copying someone else's fan art, and also you really get to see what the film looks like and feels like the overall atmosphere of it. And then opening up that image, you can trace over it if need be. So now we're going to take the inside ring of an embroidery hoop and just lay that flat on your paper and trace the inside. And this is going to be so that we know how big to make our drawing. So first we're just going to sketch out our design in pencil and then go over it in black pen or black marker. And then begin to draw your design in the middle. I actually made this design already in the past, so I'm just using that as my reference but again you can trace over the computer or a printed image if you need to. And once the main part of your design is done, you can then add flowers or anything else that you wanted to include in your embroidery. For drawing flowers, I normally just do the outline if I'm going to be filling it in completely with thread. And of course the massive hive, picking up warm moist air from the south, bringing it northward. So when the two masses collide over Kansas, we are looking for... And you can see for my lavender type of flowers, I just draw a stem and then add little dots where I'm going to put little knotted thread. And for daisies, I normally just draw individual lines since they're only going to be one little loop for each petal. And from here, I basically have fun with it. I normally pick a few flowers that I'm going to include. The key here is to just draw a little bit, take a step back, see what it's looking like, and then add more to make it proportional. And once you're happy with your design, you're going to go over it in pen. This is actually the design that I made in the past, but I'm going over Gigi again with a thicker marker just so he stands out a bit more for tracing. And you can see here that my lavender actually looks a bit different than the sketching that you just saw me draw. And that's because in this original design, I did add loops for the daisies and circles for the lavender, but I actually don't recommend doing that because when you're embroidering little French knots on the lavender, you're not necessarily going to put them in the same exact spot that you drew them in your on paper design. So if you're gonna be drawing the slip stitch daisies, I believe, that's what they're called, not quite sure. And the lavender, I recommend just doing one single dot or line for your flowers there. And this is roughly what you'll have in the end. And just grab some scotch tape or washi tape. Find yourself a window tape on your design, making sure it's smooth and there are no air bubbles in between your paper and the window. And I found taping it just makes it so much easier to trace over onto the embroidery hoop because it ensures that it's not going to be moving around. 
Just grab your embroidery hoop. I really like using these plastic ones from Michaels because they ensure your cloth isn't going to be sliding out. Flip your embroidery hoop around so that you can lay it flat against your drawing here. And as you can see, right when you lay it here, you can already see that drawing coming through. And all you have to do is just grab a pencil. You don't need anything fancy. I actually found the less sharp the pencil is, the better it goes on making sure that it's not going to be snagging the fabric if it was too sharp. If you draw light enough, you should be able to erase your pencil marks as well, so don't worry if you mess up. Once you're done tracing, you can begin to embroider over it, and when you're done, just take it off this plastic hoop and transfer it over to a wooden one. And this technique is also great if you want to be buying embroidery designs off of Etsy. You can print them out, tape them onto a window, and transfer them onto your hoop like this. And this is my end product of the Gigi design I came up with. I hope you enjoyed seeing it from Pinterest to now. Honestly, Pinterest is a great way to find inspiration for embroidery design. If you come up with any designs of your own, I would love to see them. Make sure you post them on Instagram and tag me at jamie.photo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Also leave me a comment if you like this embroidery video. I definitely could make more in-depth ones about different stitches I like to use, how I come up with color palettes, and things like that. But as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Pretty interesting. The western half of the U.S. Rain showers and thunder showers along that frontal system, and that wide band of fairly heavy snow. Is know what will happen each time that you see the frontal.